everybody. Um, this is just a welcome video welcoming you to the class and kind of going over some of the stuff that you'd go over on the first day in a seated class, but in a little uh, virtual recorded way because this is an online class. So first of all, hello, I'm your instructor. My name is Megan Rosen um, and my name is spelled oddly. It's M-E-G-A-N-N-E. -N -N -E. I know, but please don't spell it wrong when you email me. I don't like that. Uh, you can call me Megan, you can call me Ms. Rosen or Professor Rosen if you prefer. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go over the layout of the class, tell you a little bit about me, tell you a little bit about what we're going to do this semester, and uh, then turn it over to you to get to exploring the course. So this is Art History 1. So it's a history of Western art, which means it's mostly centered in uh, Europe, a little bit in Northern Africa, a little bit in the Middle East, but mostly centered in Europe um, and, and a little sort of um, teens of exploration outside of that boundary, but, but mostly, mostly Western Europe. Okay, so it's laid out like this. This is our little landing pad. This is me. I change my hair a lot. So you'll notice in the video lectures that my hair changes color periodically. So don't let that throw you. It's still me. Um, and it's important that you pay attention to announcements up here. I have some discussion post instructions up here. There's some information about quizzes. Uh, the first thing I want to do is just go over the uh, syllabus with you, which let me see here where my syllabus is. I'm just down at the bottom. I wonder, can I move my head out of the way? There we go. Okay. Oops. So course syllabus. Here we go. Okay. Uh, so this is the course syllabus. You can find links to that information um, over here on the left under course syllabus. This is an asynchronous online class. So we don't have any set meeting times. Um, not even, we don't meet by, via Zoom or anything like that. So it's up to you to keep up with what's going on in the class. You do have a to-do list that um, also populates your calendar for this class. So you have things in your to-do list that are assignments that are due, but are also like video lectures that you need to watch and things like that. Um, here's my contact information. Please contact me by emailing me at my OTC email address from your OTC email address. You can also um, message me via Canvas, that's fine. But if you're asking something specific about your grade, I need it to be via your official OTC email. The reason for that is because of FERPA regulations. FERPA regulations are privacy laws that protect you, the student. It's also why if someone called me up, say your mom or somebody called me up and asked me about your attendance or your grade in the class, I cannot tell them that because that is not their business. It is yours. So if you need to contact me, please email me. Please don't spell my name incorrectly. I know it's spelled weirdly, but I, I don't like that. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, during the week, I do my best to answer all email within 24 hours. On the weekend and over college-wide breaks, I try to still respond within 72 hours. I'm pretty good at responding to email. Here is my email address again. Um, if you're on campus and you want to come by and talk to me in person, my um, office is at the Springfield campus in NKM on the first floor in 130B. Here's my office phone number, and here are my office hours. So during these time periods, I'm usually always there. Occasionally, I will have a note on my door that says I'm doing virtual office hours that day. But usually I'm there, and you can just drop by during those times. I'm also available for in-person or virtual office hours. You just need to um, email me to set them up if they're outside my regular office hours. OK, for this class, you do not have to buy a book. So all of your information will be relayed uh, via the lectures and any written information that I present to you via Canvas. This course is an illustrated study of the history of art. You're going to learn vocabulary, basic uh, art terms. You're also going to learn about a lot of different stylistic movements in um, different art forms, painting, sculpture, architecture, from uh, the Paleolithic era, era all the way up through the late Gothic period. Um, I'm not going to read you all the objectives and things. You can read them. You, you know how to read. You're in college. Um, I am going to hit on some of the other things that students usually want to know about, like grading. 
So in this class, uh, you have some reflective writing, you have discussion board posts, you have quizzes, you have a final exam, and you have some other projects, and then there's some wiggle room for participation, and that totals in 400 points. I'll uh, go into some of these things a little bit more specifically once we hop back over to the modules uh, page. Here's some course information. You will have one week past the due date of any given assignment to turn in the assignment. I do expect late work. Um, if you have some extenuating circumstances in which you need a longer extension, please contact me by email, preferably prior to the due date. Uh, and there's my email address again. All work, even work that's critiqued or discussed in class, unless otherwise noted by me, must be turned in by a Canvas, especially in this, which is an online class. Everything happens by a Canvas, okay? If you're submitting something late and the assignment portal in Canvas is locked, email me and ask me to unlock it for you. You cannot submit work via email. It all has to come through Canvas. This is an art history class. We are going to study some works of art that feature the nude human form. If this makes you uncomfortable, that this may not be the class for you. We do look at some naked people. There are artistic representations of nude people, um, but we do look at like marble statues and things of naked the naked human form. Feel free to email me if you want clarification about that information. I'm happy to discuss it with you. Uh, we also study works of art that are many tens of thousands of years old. If studying work that is old is a problem for you, please reach out and we can discuss it. Academic grievance contact. Please feel free to email me if something's going on. If you think I messed up your grade or something, email me and I'm happy to look at it and discuss it with you. If that doesn't work, you can email my supervisor. That's my department chair, Kat Alley. Her info is here. And if that still doesn't work, you can email uh, her supervisor and, and our overall division supervisor, which is uh, the dean, Dr. Drew Averly. And there's his information there as well. Because this is an online event, we do have a proctored event. Um, I don't like proctored events that require you to go to a proctoring center because I find I have students who live all over the state. Um, so for my proctored event, it's you're looking at art assignment and you just have to take a picture while holding up a valid photo ID. That can be a driver's license. It can be your OTC student identification card. It just needs to be a photo ID and I need a picture of it and you holding it so I can see that you are you, okay? Uh, attendance, this is an online class, but that does not mean that attendance is not observed. I can see exactly how often you check on Canvas and when you participate. It's called Canvas Analytics. Um, we have a dean in charge of all things attendance related, Dr. O'Connor, and he can see that information. And if you are not regularly submitting work and participating in Canvas, it will be noticed and it will have consequences, um, which is administrative withdrawal. This is academic integrity. You can, you can read all this stuff. Um, so administrative withdrawal. It is the policy of the college that you will be administratively withdrawn from class if you uh, are not attending class for 14 consecutive calendar days. So you need to make sure that you're keeping up to date on stuff. Um, OTC has great uh, resources and services for our students. We have great, uh, DSS is great here. We have all these wonderful college related resources. If something is going on with you and you need help, feel free to reach out to me and I am happy to connect you to, to some of these resources if you find them overwhelming to navigate, but definitely take advantage of that stuff. You can read our learning outcomes. I know you all can read. Okay, let's hop back over to the modules page. I recommend that you navigate this class via the modules page. The reason I recommend that is that I spend a lot of time organizing this class and it, uh, it makes everything kind of make sense. You can see how everything's laid out in each section. So for example, if we go into early, early days, we can click here and we see a kind of overview of the class of, of this unit, including vocabulary, including some masterworks, including the stuff that you need to do in this section and some other information about learning objectives. So there's all kinds of good information there. Within each one of your uh, modules, you will have different pages that have lectures on them. So for example, if we click this one, you can see all the lectures that you need to watch for this section. They're right here. Here's one on the Paleolithic in Africa. 
here's Paleolithic in South America. So you can click all of these. You do need to watch all of the lectures. Okay, that's where most of the information for the class comes from. Also, within each section, other than having these pages that have all the lectures you need to watch, you can find the images that I use in the lectures. They're, I call them slides. So you can click on the slides for each unit and see all of that information. The other things you have in each unit are a discussion post and a quiz. Sometimes you also have a lecture reflection, okay? So um, the quiz you take online, the quizzes are all worth 10 points and they are over things that are discussed in the lectures. So if you try to cheat on your quiz by like Googling it or chat GPT in it, chat GPT and Google sometimes will lie to you and don't tell you the right answer. So use your notes, it's open note, watch the lectures, take notes, uh, but don't try to cheat on them because it might lead you astray. Um, then you also have discussions in each unit. On the discussions, you'll find on the first one here, the early, early days discussion, that there is a video similar to this one of me explaining to you how to do these lectures. So for each unit, you find your name and you find the object, the artifact that you've been assigned then you're gonna do some research on that artifact. It's very informal. Please make sure that you do watch this video where I explain it more in detail what you're going to do. Um, the, so I said quizzes and discussion posts. So the reflections have specific directions. They're each a little bit different, but you can see how these are generally all set up kind of similarly. You do have one group project. I know we're supposed to include these in classes. So your group project is the new mythology project. I've assigned groups for you. Please make sure that you go here and reach out to your group mates. Okay. So look them up um, and, and reach out to them. Okay. Um, let's see what else navigate via the modules so you can see everything. Um, the final exam. Uh, is comprehensive, so it does go over things from the beginning of class to the end of class. Before you take your final exam, make sure you check out the final exam review information and even print that out. It has all the information you need for the class. All right, that was kind of fast, but there's all the information about this class. Um, have a great time. Feel free to reach out to me, email me, message me if you have any questions.